Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, I'm Anju Kagal and today I'm going to be talking to you about non-tuberculous mycobacteria or NTMs as they are often referred to. NTMs were earlier called mycobacteria other than tuberculosis or MOTT, a term which sometimes is still used today and still earlier than that they were referred to as atypical mycobacteria. Now as you all know mycobacteria are of two types the cultivable and the non-cultivable. In the cultivable we have mycobacterium tuberculosis and non-tuberculous mycobacteria whereas in the non-cultivable we have mycobacterium leprae. And as I mentioned earlier today our focus is on the non-tuberculous mycobacteria. Now according to Runyon's classification non-tuberculous mycobacteria are classified into photochromogens, scotochromogens, non-photochromogens and rapid growers. As the slide indicates these were referred to as Runyon type 1 to Runyon type 4. The photochromogens are those which produce a pigment in the presence of light and the common photochromogenic NTMs are Mycobacterium cansasi, Mycobacterium simiae, Mycobacterium marinum and Mycobacterium asiaticum. Amongst the scotochromogens that is the organisms which produce a pigment in the absence of light, we have Mycobacterium scrofulaceum, Sulgai, Silatum, and Gordonae. In the non chromogens, these are the ones which, as the name indicates, do not produce pigments, and in these, we have Mycobacterium xenopi, M. avium intracellulare, intracellulare, or MAC as it is referred to. M. ulcerans and M. malmuens. Amongst the rapid growers, that is those which grow within 7 days, you have Mycobacterium fortuitum, Mycobacterium chelonae, Mycobacterium abscissus, and M. smegmatis. Now, let us move on to the epidemiology of these organisms. These organisms are ubiquitous and found in water, soil, food and animals. They are relatively resistant to chlorination and therefore can be found in running tap water. They do not spread person to person, but through the vehicle of water they can cause outbreaks in hospital settings in immunocompromised individuals and are also known to cause pseudo outbreaks that is they have been cultured although they are not causing disease. In the past one of the most common risk factors for getting an NTM infection was immunosuppression and when we started getting the epidemic of HIV it was found that a lot of patients suffered from non-tuberculous mycobacterial infections. Old age is also known to predispose to NTM infections as is history of no BCG vaccination, cystic fibrosis and fibronodular bronchiectasis predisposes an individual to pulmonary infection. Today, 
we find that NTMs can also cause disease in immunocompetent individuals. So, let us look at the disease spectrum. The main four diseases caused by NTMs are pulmonary disease, lymphadenitis, cutaneous and disseminated disease. Mycobacterium avium intracellular, intracellular A or MAC can cause pulmonary, lymph node, cutaneous as well as disseminated infection. Mycobacterium scrofulaceum is also known to cause lymphadenitis. M. fortutum and M. chelone are in notorious for causing injection abscesses as well as wound infections. Now, let us look at a case study. A 55 year old lady presented with chronic cough accompanied by fatigue and weight loss. She gave a past history of repeated episodes of bronchitis in the last two years which improved with treatment only to reappear again. Her x-ray chest appeared normal. However, a high resolution CT scan showed evidence of bronchiectasis with many small nodules consistent with infection. The physician advised a sputum culture and the specimen grew mycobacterium avium complex in two of three cultures after three weeks. Following this report, the patient was put on a three drug regimen cons consisting of clarithromycin, ethambutol and rifampicin which were given for a long period of time more than six months and the patient responded to therapy. So, patients with pulmonary symptoms due to NTM are often missed. The rather they are misdiagnosed as having the pulmonary symptoms due to other bacterial infections and not due to NTMs. As these organisms are found in the en environment and also colonize the respiratory tract, diagnosis is difficult. So, there are some principles which we follow for diagnosing non tuberculous mycobacteria infections. First of all, clinically the patient should have pulmonary symptoms. Radiologically, the x ray may show nodular or cavitatory opacities. HRCT scan should may show multifocal bronchiectasis bronchi bronchi with multiple small nodules. HRCT scan may show multifocal bronchiectasis associated with multiple small nodules. More important than this is the microbiological culture. A positive culture from at least 2 out of 3 or more expectorated sputum samples would confirm the diagnosis of an NTM. Again a positive culture from a single bronchial wash or lavage can also be considered consistent with an NTM infection. Transbronchial or lung biopsy with histopathological features consistent with a granulomatous infection or presence of AFP together with a positive culture for NTM indicates an NTM infection. Therefore, culture in these patients is very important to clinch the diagnosis. Coming to lymph node disease, 
MAC is the most common pathogen followed by Mycobacterium scrofulaceum and M. Kansasi. Lymph node disease is usually seen in children less than 5 years of age, usually involves submandibular sites. The symptoms are subacute and the skin will be indurated and there will be sinus tract form formation. You need to rule out tuberculosis. Therefore, a fine needle or excisional biopsy would help you first of all identify the organism on ZN stain. However, to differentiate it from mycobacterium tuberculosis, it has to be cultured on LJ medium. Now, this will show you growth within 2 to 3 weeks if it is not a rapid grower and it is an NTM. It can further be identified on the basis of biochemical tests. Cutaneous and soft tissue lesions. Here I will present another case. A 30 year old lady had undergone a laparoscopic intra abdominal appendicectomy. Post operatively, a pot site infection which was not responding to usual antibiotics persisted for several months. Repeated culture from the site did not reveal any specific pathogen. Suspecting an NTM infection, the pus sample was inoculated on LG medium and McConkey medium. The McConkey medium was incubated for more than 3 days and on the 6th day lactose fermenting colonies were visualized. A smear showed poorly stained gram positive rods which were acid fast by ZN stain. So, this appeared to be a rapid growing non tuberculous mycobacterium. The LJ growth also appeared within 7 days. So, it could have been mycobacterium fortuitum, mycobacterium chelone, abscesses and M. smegmatis, but based on biochemical tests it was identified as mycobacterium chelone. Surgical debridement was done followed by treatment with clarithromycin and the patient was cured of her infection. Another form of cutaneous infection is water or fish, fish tank granuloma. This is a disease which is caused by mycobacterium marinum and is usually seen in people who work in pools or aquariums. Usually, the patient will present with a granulomatous nodular lesion. The disease has an incubation period of 1 to 2 months and these lesions later tend to ulcerate and are usually found on the hands. A biopsy is essential for the diagnosis. Smear and culture will also aid in the diagnosis. Another cutaneous infection seen mainly in Africa is called Buruli ulcer and is caused by mycobacterium ulcerans. The patient presents with a chronic cutaneous ulcer and again diagnosis can be done on culture or biopsy and debridement is the main method of treatment. Disseminated infections are seen in severely immunocompromised individuals where they may present with fever, weight loss, diarrhea, any site can be affected and 
the common organisms implicated in disseminated disease are mycobacterium avium intracellularic complex, M. genovensae, M. abscesses, M. chelunii, rapid growers and M. hemophilium. So, coming to the laboratory diagnosis of NTMs, an appropriate sample is collected and on microscopy just like we do the regular ZN stain, we will see acid fast bacilli and these bacilli sometimes may appear in chains. These organisms grow well on LG medium and some rapid growers like fortuitum and chelony will grow on McConkie's medium. The rapid growers will show growth within a week whereas, the others tend to grow within 2 to 3 weeks. Further identification is done by demonstrating growth in the presence of PNB. In fact, this is one of the tests we always do when we are trying to differentiate a mycobacterium tuberculosis from NTMs in a respiratory sample. Like I mentioned earlier, colonies in the case of rapid growers will appear within 4 to 5 days, whereas they take 2 to 3 weeks for photochromogens, scotochromogens and non-chromogens. Colonies when they are exposed to light for photochromogens will produce an orangish pigment due to production of beta carotene the scotochromogens will produce a pigment even in the dark. Other biochemical tests which can be done to identify the organism are the niacin test, aryl sulfatase test, nitrate, catalase and urease tests. Treatment of NTMs is very different to that for mycobacterium tuberculosis. Many of the NTMs are found to be susceptible to macrolides in which one usually uses clarithromycin or azithromycin. MAC usually responds to a combination of a macrolide, ethambutol and rifampicin. Mycobacterium xenopy is usually treated with rifampicin, ethambutol and INH. Kansasi and malmuense is treated with rifampicin and ethambutol. Marinum with rifampicin or clarithromycin and ethambutol. Whereas, rapid growers besides being susceptible to macrolides can also be treated with doxycycline, amicacin, imipinum, quinolones and sulfonamides. So, usually for rapid growers, we could give a combination of clarithromycin and amicacin. So, what are the principles of treatment? First of all, you have to ensure that the NTM which has been isolated is definitely a pathogen and not a colonizer treatment usually uses a combination of at least two drugs. The duration of therapy can be from 6 to 12 months and should be followed and treatment can be stopped after you have established that the cultures are negative for NTM. In soft tissue infections, because of rapidly growing mycobacteria, a combination of debridement and treatment with antimicrobials is recommended. To summarize, NTMs are acid fast organisms which on Runyon's classification can be divided into photochromogens, scotochromogens, non-chromogens and rapid growers which helps us identify the species. 
they can cause pulmonary disease, lymphadenopathy, cutaneous and soft tissue infections and disseminated disease. They are usually found in immunocompromised patients and diagnosis is often missed, but conclusive diagnosis is made only by demonstrating repeated isolates from a sterile sites like the respiratory tract. However, from sterile sites even a single isolate can be significant. Treatment for these organisms is done with macrolides and some of the anti-tubercular drugs and can vary from 6 months to 1 year. Thank you for listening patiently to this episode of non-tuberculous mycobacteria.